The female immune system! Woo! Sorry, so we usually get a bigger applause. Uh, and if you think that's a bit unusual, uh, you know, I'm studying female immunology and I'm a man, well, guess what? This is what a feminist looks like. <laughs> um, so I'm an immunologist, uh, and what that, well, basically, when I tell people that at the pub, at the cafe, or whatever, I get two questions. Uh, what is immunology? Uh, and oh, the last few years must have been pretty bloody busy. Um, so for the first question, uh, immunology is the study of our immune system and how uh, we, our bodies basically prevent against like, bacterial or viral infections. Um, so the other question, uh, I'm not that kind of immunologist. Um, in fact, when the pandemic happened, I was making a quick buck with old Pete Evans making these COVID light cure machines. <laughs> You know, you know how it goes. You're on a off-tree yoga facility in Byron Bay. You get locked into those baby blue eyes, and suddenly you're making money. <laughs> so I'm what you'd call a computational biologist, uh, and I use our statistics and um, computers to analyze biological data. And I know what that sounds like. <laughs> How can you be a scientist? You're not looking down the microscope or killing a couple mice. <laughs> and I know, I know, like, if, if I could inject mice with cancer and then harvest their organs later, I would be very, very happy. But that's just not the sort of work that I do. So what do I do? Uh, well, I study autoimmune diseases. Um, and if you can remember anything from this talk, other than, gee, that guy wants to kill some mice, um, <laughs> is that 80% of all people with an autoimmune disease are female. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, autoimmune diseases are diseases where your immune system gets confused uh, and disordered and starts to attack itself. And you'll see here in this figure, uh, the, the sort of more common autoimmune diseases, the vast proportion of patients are female. So why is this the case? Well, females just have a better immune system. Um, this image is showing that after vaccination, females will have a more robust immune response. It was a really fascinating study where they gave a half flu vaccine dose uh, to females and a full vaccine dose to males, and the females had a more robust, more stronger immune response than the males did. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, uh, females died at a lower rate uh, from, from COVID. Um, and for the blokes in the audience, feeling a little bit left out, we're number one in cancer! <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah, so females get cancer below the right. <clears throat> told you it was gonna get dark. Um, okay, so, why, what's going on here? Why do females have a better immune system? And I know how much women love men telling them about their own bodies. We're gonna go, <laughs> we're gonna go straight into it. <laughs> so, menopause. Um, basically, the different phases of the menstrual cycle have this really interesting effect on the immune system. So estrogen and progesterone are what's known as immunomodulators. So basically, they make the immune system more enhanced. Uh, androgen, on the other hand, actually suppresses the immune system. So during menstruation, the changes of uh, the sex hormones throughout the different phases has these really fascinating changes to um, the, the immune system. During pregnancy, as well, uh, the increasing levels of sex hormones has a fascinating biology during, during pregnancy. And also uh, menopause, when uh, those sex hormones, they drastically reduce. Interestingly, a lot of autoimmune diseases, that's the age of onset, around the time of menopause. So there's obviously something going on with sex hormones, uh, but that's, that's not what I, I look at. Uh, I look at the X chromosome. So the question here is, how does the X chromosome contribute to autoimmune disease? Okay. So females, XX females, and males, XY males. Uh, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for females to have like a whole other extra chromosome and be expressing like double the amount of genes. So basically they have to switch off one of their uh, chromosomes in a process known as uh, X chromosome inactivation. Um, and so uh, what this figure down the bottom here of these like red and, and uh, green dots is showing uh, in mice, which they can label them, it's like a random process. So the paternal and maternal chromosome uh, is being switched off in this completely random sort of way. Uh, I realize I've just said chromosome about 200 times. Uh, so if you don't know what a chromosome is, don't feel too bad. I asked my, uh, my girlfriend the other day, uh, well, you know, you know what a chromosome is made of? She goes, 
cells. <laughs> and if you're going, fuck, is that right? <laughs> uh, a chromosome is just a compressed DNA. It's just a little, little packet of DNA, if you will. So what's really interesting about X chromosome inactivation is because we're dealing with biology here, uh, that process isn't actually uh, perfect. So in fact, 15 to 25 percent of genes on that inactivated X chromosome, they actually escape this inactivation. And so females are able to express more X chromosome genes uh, than males ever could. You can think of it like the great escape. Um, instead of escaping from the Nazis, you're escaping from epigenetic regulation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's, what's the go? Like why, why, why are we talking about X chromosome? What's the story here? Well, the X chromosome is very, very important for the immune system. So some of these genes I'm, I'm highlighting here, if you're born without these or you have a mutation in these genes, you basically don't have an immune system. Just like poor old David Vedder, uh, the bubble boy, as he's more commonly known, whose uh, tortured life will forever be used as an example in immunology textbooks until like, the end of time. Uh, so now, <laughs> I'm, I'm jumping off, we're jumping on here. So the, the immune system, right? Very, very complicated. But all you need to know is that the immune system really functions to differentiate self from non-self. So in autoimmune disease, that distinction is broken. And so these individuals, their immune system starts to attack itself. The immune system is kind of broken up into uh, the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. You can think of the innate immune system as like, um, like, like a bouncer at a nightclub. Like a real mean bouncer at a nightclub, checking your ID when you're like 30, still checking it. Um, <laughs> letting in every hot girl that walks past, uh, but kind of sussing out, uh, you know, like who's, who's coming in. That's, that's the innate immune system, very specific in that way. The adaptive immune system is kind of like, a, like an undercover cop at a nightclub, searching for that one guy with a joint in his pocket, you know? They have a sort of ability to sense out things in a very targeted way. And I know we're in Newtown, so A cup. <laughs> Cops are tough. <laughs> okay, so what's the solution? So single cell RNA sequencing uh, uh, detects genes contributing towards autoimmunity. Okay, so now we're going to talk about single cell RNA sequencing. So when we're trying to understand our biology, and the immune system is composed of all of these different cells, and they have all these different functions, we need to think about it in, um, in a very specific way. But up until maybe the last like five or so years, the technology to do this hasn't really existed. So this is where single cell RNA sequencing comes in. Um, you can think of bulk RNA sequencing, the old technology, as kind of having, looking at a smoothie. You know, like if you've got a smoothie, you've, you've got a smoothie. <laughs> very, very poignant point. Um, uh, but then obviously if we want to know more about the smoothie, like is it healthy, what's going on? You, we know that there's the blueberries, the milk, the honey, the kale if you're a sicko, all that stuff. <laughs> So in single cell RNA sequencing, what we do is we take these individual immune cells, we sequence the DNA or the genes that are being expressed uh, in those cells, and then we can perform various like, statistical tests and all these things to understand more about it, okay? But uh, if you haven't done biology for a while, it's cool. Uh, DNA is transcribed into RNA, and RNA is translated into protein, okay? So in RNA sequencing, we're detecting the genes, the RNA expression, but we're really inferring the protein. And in, in biology, proteins just do the thing. You know, they do all of the different things. Um, I asked a friend of mine, uh, gee, what's a funny way to describe protein? He said, cum has a lot of protein. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, so you can think of it like that if you'd like. Uh, well, that slide's a bit gone, but anyway. All right, so, uh, right. Now we've got all this data, and this is where I come into play. With all these zeros and ones and various numbers, okay? We're happy with that. So what I do is I do uh, machine learning to analyze this data. So you can think of machine learning as like pattern recognition, um, stats magic. Um, it's AI, but less racist. <laughs> like it's still racist, but it's like less. Um, okay, so here's like some results. Uh, the graph is very pretty. If you understand it, you know like I'm bloody stoked with this. But basically, uh, we're looking at these really um, quite, uh, I'm going to say mean cells in the body, these cytotoxic T cells. Their actual function typically is to kill virally infected cells, but in autoimmune diseases, these are the cells that are attacking our tissues. And what we've found 
in uh, five controls and five disease, these 15 genes are really able to predict like who is who from the patients and the controls. And if I do this in a larger um, a data set, uh, the lupus data set of almost 52,000 cells of just that one cell type, it's a mind blowing amount of data. We see the same genes being picked up in this way. Uh, interestingly, uh, exist one of these genes is actually controlling X chromosome activation, which is a very, uh, very important hit in this, in this study. So what does this all mean, right? So just in conclusion, uh, autoimmune diseases, they disproportionately affect females. Um, uh, genes on the X chromosome may be contributing um, to autoimmunity. Uh, machine learning has identified potential um, targets uh, for, for these, um, these diseases. This is really important because the average time for diagnosis of autoimmune disease is like five years or so. So we really need to improve um, how we do this. Uh, and so yeah, could we use it to diagnose patients better? Could we use this information to uh, find more therapeutic targets? Uh, tell you what, Pete Evans, he's, he's <laughs> <laughs> he is, yeah. uh, Thank you so much, and um, yeah. Let's